There are many approaches to Baba. In fact, the Sufi is saying there are as many paths to God as there are souls of individuals. And, and this is one of the major approaches to Baba, which is a, a conscious merging with him <clears throat> and the companionship. But there are uh, other Baba people who are live lives totally dedicated to Baba. And I've heard them say they don't even know what we're talking about. Because this is not, this isn't their experience, even though they're fully dedicated to Baba. So I'm just, well, I just want to say that. So let's go ahead. Robin. Um, this is something I've really been thinking about like all week. And I don't, I can't say it, how or where it, is a, it comes from the book exactly but I think it comes from going through the book over and over. And um, I'm going to read one little page from Mayor Baba Calling and then talk about what feels like an insight. I don't know, maybe after I hear from you guys, I'll change it, but I don't know. Uh, this says, do not fear suffering. Uh, you should look upon physical and mental suffering. These are quotes from Baba, uh, as gifts from God. They bring their own lessons of the futility of the passing and of the intrinsic worth of the eternal. Do not get disheartened and alarmed when adversity, calamity, and misfortune pour in upon you. Thank God for he has thereby given you the opportunity of acquiring forbearance and fortitude. Those who have acquired the power of bearing with adversities can easily enter the spiritual path. There's one more paragraph. Do not fear suffering or blame anyone for it. According to the law that governs the universe, all suffering is your labor of love to unveil your real self in capitals. In comparison to the infinite bliss you experience on attaining the I am God state, all the suffering and agonies you go through amount to practically nothing. And what happened to me was I just kind of like flipped over when I uh, hear, you know, all the quotes that Baba says about how we uh, create our own 99% of our suffering is self created. And I've always felt like, oh, no, I've got to stop doing that, you know, like, oh, yeah, like, you know, that's, that's not right, I have to stop it. This kind of flipped me over that our suffering, we do create it as a gift in a sense to ourself and God, because this is the way we get out of here. It's the process we need to go as he, we need to be human to get to God and humans suffer. And that's how we get out of here is to, um, you know, ha have this suffering that we create in order to go through this journey. And it's just been on my mind all week. So I just wanted to share it. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> what well, What do you think the one percent suffering is? That's not self created. It's a good question. I mean, I think you know God makes us human in a sense and set this all up. And I think you know to be human, we have to be at least believe we're limited, and that in itself in itself is suffering. Uh, so that's God's gift to us. <laughs> And the rest, I think, is is um, how we, you know, manifest and create the journey. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's... What do you think it is? What do you well, say? I think the 1% suffering is the suffering that comes from loving, the suffering that comes from trying to get over the addiction to self-preoccupation. I mean, you know, that suffering that's where we're trying to break free and draw closer to Baba, I feel that's like uh, not self-created. That's, that's uh, I guess like you were saying, that's created by separation, him. Separation. Right? What's that? The separation, the fact that we're separate, we think we're separate yeah. from God. And, and, and trying to overcome that, the suffering that re requires to overcome that is real meaningful suffering as opposed to just, you know, getting uh, totally uh, But I think it's all meaningful, not the the content of it, but the fact that we suffer 
is what we need to do to get over it. Yeah. To get to God. Yeah. So it's valuable. Yeah, it, yeah. <clears throat> Let's see Ray. what. Ray, go ahead. Okay. Um, I think that, um, Jeff, that's interesting you said, because I thought about the same question, right? And I thought, well, maybe the one. Excuse me, Jeff, uh, do you have your sound? It's like muffled tonight. I don't, is there anything is, you can adjust? Oh, is mine, you mean mine is No, I'm sorry, uh, Ray. Mine? Yours is fine, Jeff. Uh -huh. Let me see. I don't know. Do I'm other gonna... people hear it like that? Yeah, it's muffled. Yeah, it's muffled. Yeah, it's muffled. muffled. All right, so why don't I bow out and then come back in, all right? So someone else. Can... Okay. All right. I'm hearing you all right, but okay. Anyone else want to uh, share about what this book has meant to them? What <clears throat> Jeff Aspel. Hey, Bob, everyone. This is unplanned. I'm just going to free associate. Reading Darwin's book has given me on and on more and more personal contact through my intentioning myself to be with Baba by saying his name, Baba, Baba, beloved Baba, I love you, Baba, Baba, I love you. This book, as we read it together as a group, and the book is really important to be read, we get a whole lot more of it because the nature I have feel, I feel about this book is to be read as a group and talk about it. And with somebody like Jeff and others who did know Mandali, it takes on an increasingly discerning awareness that as somebody mentioned a little earlier, it's very difficult to really connect as deeply if someone like Jeff Wolverton was not here. I took a bunch of notes over the last two years in my book with comments that Goher, Jeff, and many others have made. And I thought your insights were very profound. And so my book is scribbled with probably 300 sentences. When we talk about what we read, which a lot of it had to do with drawing closer to Baba. And Darwin speaks about the unconscious a little bit. Darwin speaks about how to let go and to love God. And this is such a remarkably beautiful written book. I think somebody once said it's like a manual, a divine manual to get closer to Baba. For those of for those souls that relate to this particular approach to getting close to Baba. Darwin's writing is extraordinarily sensitive. Darwin's writing is so deep and yet not conceptually difficult to get. I'm, 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 fairly, dys I'm fairly dyslexic, uh, and I mean that sincerely, and I do get what Darwin says. Actually, it's impossible not to get what he says. And what he says is so filled with love. His love for Baba, Baba's love for Darwin, Baba's love for us. Here, as we read this book, we feel a much clearer, much more profound love for Baba, for one another. This group has really become a very intimately close, graced, grace-filled group. Uh, I know I can't be the only one that's feeling this. There have been some wonderful, wonderful, wonderful give and takes with people and thinking and oh man uh, I'll tell you this is a materialistic comment that I'm sorry to say it this way if I could be given a million dollars for every time I would have missed Sunday night I would have said I'm sorry I'm going to be here with everybody that's how these meetings are much more precious than any money they're like this is so important, it keeps me all the more 
resonating because it's not easy to remember Bob his name more and more and be remembering his name with love. It is very challenging, uh, very challenging. And this group, the reading of Darwin's book, the interactions we've had, the beautiful questioning we had earlier before with different people, should we tape it, shouldn't we? I mean, it's so beautiful that we have a spiritual democracy. This group is just a wonderful vehicle to get closer to Baba as he allowed us to get closer to him through Darwin and closer to each of us and all of us. It's a fantastic experience for me. Beautiful. That was, yeah, it's true. Really, it's Beautiful. true. Well, well said. Beautiful. Yeah, you folks have expressed yourself so vividly and clearly and with such love and feeling. You know, that. Yeah, I, just to mention that <clears throat> You know, when back in 1970, you've heard this before, but where Erich was asked, is Baba going to become a religion? And he, he and, and Darwin said, I mean, Erich said that Bob was adamant that it not become a religion. And the person asked, well, how can that, how can that be avoided? And he said, if his lovers would get together in small groups and share their mystical experiences, it could be averted. And that was 1970, and Erich would have, I think, changed it to share our inner experiences, which everyone has done so beautifully. And they're so unique. It's, you know, it's not like we've got a dogma here that <laughs> we're all quite different, and that's the beautiful thing. So. Martha? Um, take your spot, Ray. Um, I think the I think the first thing that comes to my mind that I've uh, been exposed to in this last uh, whatever time, um, I never knew that I could ch change my sanskaras. I never knew that if something comes up, I could actually see it and decide to do it differently. Beautiful. Uh, that's that's been really uh, <laughs> it's been very. Um, I don't know, it's just been very surprising and also exciting, you know, it's uh, to have that more self-awareness in what I'm doing. Um, the other thing, like Jeff said, um, Jeff number two, is uh, just the power of Baba's name. That's come up in all and everything, but more, it just come up so much. It's just really um, emphasized to me, uh, empowered me with Baba's name and the gift of Baba's name. And the third thing, or maybe the first thing too, I, this whole thing about suffering, I, I am still, I don't have clarity about this suffering thing, but I do say that it's been, the box has been opened in this group talking about it, uh, about suffering, us taking, so having suffering, Baba's suffering, all of that. And even though I don't understand it, uh, I've been exposed to something new and, um, and, and that's one of the things that, that studying this book has helped me with. Yeah, beautiful. I, I second that. And so I also just, want to say, I hope that, I hope Miss Rosalie is still with us and we didn't lose her. That's all. Go ahead, Jeff. No, I'm, uh, I'm having to, someone doesn't know the past I didn't catch code. that, Marta. I didn't catch it, what'd you say? I just said, I hope that you're still with us and-, and uh, I'm listening, I'm oh, listening. Oh, good. Okay, we, I didn't want to lose you, so okay, good. Baba's not gonna lose me. That's all that's important to me. Okay, okay. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. <clears throat> all right, Janet Jacob. <laughs> Yeah, um, well, it, it feels emotional to me, this whole process of kind of tying up some loose ends. Janet, your, your voice is muffled. Oh, okay, let's see, can you hear it now? Oh, good, yeah. much better. Okay, I must have had something, okay. I said it just feels emotional to me, this process in itself of kind of tying together loose ends and trying to make a creation of, of what we've been doing for the last 
two plus year or two years. Um, but what I what my, Darwin's book, it it isn't something to me for me that has been a thing. Kind of like what Marta was saying. I am I'm envious a little bit because I can't say that this or that was was what I have learned from it. It. it it each time it's just sort of like a process and I don't know where it's taking me. I mean, and I still don't know where it's taking me, but I feel as if it is indeed um, changing my consciousness in a way that I am not really fully aware of, in fact, but that I, I mean, I, I almost feel like I, want to con just continue to eat and digest Darwin's words over and over again. Um, <laughs> that, that I can't get too much of them is I guess what I'm really trying to say. There isn't, for me, there is not too much of these words. Um, I mean, right now what I've taken to doing is at night before I go to bed, I just, open the book and I read whatever section, one of the sections on the page that I've opened to. And, and I always feel like there's, it, there's a new aha in, in that process. And I, I mean, and it makes me kind of wonder like if I'm dense or something, because where have I been the last hundred times I've read that? <laughs> Same one, you know? I mean, really. A, a, a perplexing situation for me, but so it isn't, I can't concretize this. For some reason, these, I can't concretize it. It isn't, it isn't a concrete thing for my mind. And nor is, nor are our discussions concrete, concrete for me. I know that there has been a process that, that has happened. And in that process, I feel an openness toward all of you that, um, of whom I've only met, Jeff is the only person here I've ever met. And uh, so, uh, you know, but I feel a closeness and I feel that sense of what Jeff talks about that, that Erich said that, you know, that we all have a different perspective on it. You know, have I gotten irritated with what things some people have said? Yes, I have at times, I'm going to be honest, you know, I mean, in that they grind me a little bit the wrong way. And it's like, eh, but, um, uh, and other times, you know, it's like, oh my God, how, I just wish I was spiritual like everybody else in this group. And I feel like, oh, oh dear, I, <laughs> I missed, I missed that. I missed that cookie when they were passed out, but um, but the, so the, but the, it feels, it has been to me, what it's meant to me is a process, a process of becoming ever more aware and closer and feeling the companionship of our beloved. And that's what has really uh, made it very extremely valuable to me. And um, have we decided what the future is? I mean, is that, and I, I didn't, I came in a little late, so I may have missed that. That's still up in the air. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Beautifully said though, Janet. Yeah, it's, it, yeah. It, it's hard to describe these things, but you're, you, you all are describing it so well, you know, the, the, the different a, a, a facets of what this book is. Yeah. Right. Is it better now? Yeah. Yeah, I had a had a, had a, I had two webcams and it was listening to the other one. That's why it was muffled. Sorry about that. Yep. So, uh, Jeff, I was first of all, um, I've the Bob sets it up. We have to think of it this way too. The pandemic happens this happens and so we we we've sort of been you know uh, how you can get a piece of steak for those meat eaters that there are and and they bang it up so it's easy to eat you know maybe it's something like really you know sort of um, um, tenderized us and so it's it's baba's timing 
But what what I felt is like the fact we have a this is like a Baba meeting that I can't have because it's too far for me to go places. And you know, um, up in New Jersey where where I used to live, I could go to New York every week if I wanted to make the effort. It was a little easier. I could go down to Nashawans, New Jersey, which was further once a month. See, I could do that, but this is this is a this is a Baba meeting focused on 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 Darwin Shaw's work. So I, I wanted to mention that. Then I thought Jeff's point about the one percent. I I didn't think of it like that, but it's interesting because yeah, it could be that. I thought that the one percent that's uh, uh, um that we haven't created ourselves is our karma we have to work through and because he's here we don't have to do the gyrations that we would do to try and wangle out of our karmic debt uh and that causes more problems for us I, that's the way I, that i always thought thought about uh that so uh i wanted to say that about the one percent then i wanted to mention about the um, uh from the book, uh, the Dress Your Soul with Baba, because I knew Bobby Bernstein's song and I, I could sing it, uh, but it never, it never sunk in it. This is, this is it. This is the secret. So I started doing that because of the book. Uh, but uh, please live this day through me. A simple way of saying, I now begin entrusting every thought, word, and deed to you. Uh, that hit home so now i use both phrases in the morning that's from the book also and about baba wanting us to give him his his garbage i had heard the story about uh, bob about the coconut story uh, uh when he receives a lot of coconuts he says i don't need this i need what i don't have the, the weaknesses so that you know somehow for some reason though i heard the story this book has changed my life through through that, and um, then I I I I guess um, I say that um, the this this book is like it, you can read the discourses and not necessarily have the same effect because someone who read the discourses and met Baba and stayed with Baba to see it in action. He's talking about the discourses, so it's like, it's it's like like a double whammy. So those are the things I I, I think, of. and this has been all through this uh, this uh, Sunday afternoons. I don't know what I'll do if this doesn't happen. Maybe we should take a breather for the summer, just so that things can. I I don't know. I have that that idea. I don't know why, but it seems like. Maybe that's that's a good idea. Um, uh, so I just put that out. So that's what I have to say. Thank you, Jay, Jay Baba. Yeah. yeah, wonderful, Ray. Yeah, yeah. And you're you know what you're saying is this: many things that he touches on here have been incorporated into our life, and boy, they make a difference. You know, even dressing your soul with Baba, or you know, entrusting your day with Baba and saying Baba's name, all these things are getting, working into the very fabric of our day. It's, it's, and, and one thing about a therapist is a therapist makes you stay with a problem or an issue a lot longer than you'd ever <laughs> want to do it yourself. And, and, you know, and, and likewise, this place that Bob, I mean, <laughs> Darwin's writing keeps you at an inner place longer probably than we would if if we, if it was just our own mind because it might be with something and then fly off this you stay very concentrated on these inner places and i i find it very valuable yeah <clears throat> anthony hey, hey jay bob everyone ray that was so well said. Um, I feel the same thing. It, God, it's hard to even put all of this into words, um, what this has meant. But I just knew I was missing something in my spiritual life for 
a very long time. I mean, many, many years, and I couldn't figure out what it was, no matter how hard I tried. Um, you know, and then some years ago, I, I knew that Baba was my master, but it, it was such, I don't know, it's just like in a superficial way. And from reading the discourses and all that, and God speaks, like you could feel like, okay, I know this is the truth. Like I can see how brilliant and perfect the philosophy is. I can see how, you know, if I understand these things deeper and start putting them to practice, how they could help me in my life and spiritual path. But I don't know. It just, it, it just, it still felt so distant from me, all of it. It's like you could recognize it was the truth, but there's no feeling of closeness to it at all. And then after I read Darwin's um, As Only God Can Love, a little bit more, I, I felt that feeling of the closeness of like, oh, okay, he's I this book just has like a love to it. He's talking about his life. Like I, this feeling is like helping me to feel a, a little bit more like, wow, this is the direction I need to head in. But it still was so far away feeling all of it. This group, and I think it was the combination of Darwin's book and his personality and all of you and Jeff, I mean, the combination of those three things, it just, it brought it home. I mean, I, I finally feel now like, like I'm a part of this whole Baba thing, <laughs> you know, whatever you want to call it, like the... <laughs> You know, Baba's love, the the family of everybody else that's doing it, the connection to the Mondali, like this is now almost a daily thing where I, I feel like I'm part of this thing. And I feel like I've em entered into like the last, I don't even know how you put it, like the last chapter of my spiritual path. And like, you know, there's still so far to go with it. But it's like, oh, wow, I just need to stay with this and keep mining this deeper and deeper. This is what I, I want and what I've been waiting for. And, you know, I'm, there's a whole nother journey to get to that now. But, you know, I, I finally feel like I've, you know, I'm at the door of where I know I need to start going now for the rest of my life and nothing could do that until I finally was around like, the other people that were in it, everybody here talking, sharing Jeff's love, like the whole everything is what finally brought it home. And I mean, it, it's just grace to me how the whole thing happened with the pandemic and all of us coming together and Jeff, it was just grace. And to see that no matter how hard I tried, I could not do this on my own until the grace brought us all together and we all did it together um you know i just trust now that whatever comes after this you know the grace will hopefully be there and like jeff and you know darwin and everyone have said hopefully these inner links are there now with all of us and wherever we end up after this however it unfolds you know hopefully this feeling you know something's going to come of this that we're going to stay connected into into this whole thing because we're all we're all in it together. We're all on the on the train together here. So, yeah, thank you all so much. Wow. Just no words for this. Yeah, beautifully said, Anthony. Yeah, it becomes all so much more personal, <clears throat> Baba, just through all of this. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> Doris. Hey, Baba. First, I read Darwin's, is it an autobiography or a biography? I can't remember that. His first book at his only yeah. God Love. Is it? Autobiography, I autobiography, guess you call it. Yeah. <clears throat> well, what struck me about Darwin is that at age, I think it, when he was being baptized, he had a white light experience. And then he knew that God was coming again uh, so that when he saw the advertisement for Baba arriving in America, he knew this is the this is the the savior come again, and 
So this guy was enlightened already, you know, before he even met Baba. And and then he spent time in, in the 30s and the and he helped build the center and he spent time in the 50s with Baba. So this is this is a this is a Western Mondale. This is one of the Mondale. And and then Jeff's experience knowing Darwin was really nice for me. Um, um, and the other people that here, Rosalie and other people who knew who met Darwin and spent time with Darwin, um, that transmission uh, of just like this is what I knew about him, this is what it was like, that was really important to me. And then, you know, there's been two series through the book that are recorded. This one, this last series was not recorded. I appreciated this not being recorded, that it being a private group, because the sharing, I was able to go much deeper with my sharing. And uh, the depth of the sharing was really beautiful. And, and if you all remember, we've seen people go through life experiences here. People in the hospital, separations, you know, a lot of life, some serious life experiences people went through here, illnesses. And um, we, were, we were all here with each other, supporting each other. Um, and that I felt that was really beautiful. My sense is every time I've met somebody that I met in India, that we spent time together in India, we'd see each other and it's like our hearts would jump. Like we had this really profound experience in India together. And I feel that way about all of you. Should we run into each other in the center? Um, should And in fact, actually, we did. Uh, we ran into, oh gosh, Jeff, what was the, what's the couple? The guy plays guitar. I'm spacing their names right now. Um, oh, they, yeah. You, you mean uh, Ken and Betty? Yeah. yeah so, Ken. so, you know, Ken and Betty have been here a lot. And we ran into them at the center. And it was like, oh, it's you, you know, 3D. And <laughs> we spent time with them. We went on, uh, to the beach for a walk with them. There's just that, that depth of connection. And uh, where I live in Durham, North Carolina, we have strong groups. We have weekly groups that Gil and Chitra put on. There, I mean, there's actually more Baba events in the week than we can go to. And then we can go to the center because we're close to the center. But this is, so I know what it's like, how, how much love I feel at Baba meetings. And, and that's what I feel here too. And of course, during the, the early pandemic, I wasn't going to anything. We weren't going to the center. We weren't do, doing any of that. So this was really important um, to feel that love. And then to read this book, which is, I don't know, I think it, it kind of sparkles with light. It sp sparkles with Baba's love. It sparkles with Darwin, this amazing Mondelez experience. Um, and, you know, I love reading the stories of other Mondali. You know, I love Erich's book. I'm actually rereading Erich's book, one of his books. And, you know, there's Ball. Ball. I mean, I've read lots of Mondali, Mondali books, but this one is, this is different in that it's a, it's a, it's how to be, how to love God and how to think, how to, how to train your mind and how to, it's just, it's just a beautiful experience of someone's spiritual path. And then I can take, your experiences and my experiences and we share those and look at things differently about my spiritual paths so i just for the future generations i highly recommend going through it with a group and uh sharing together intimately and uh the bond will be really strong Jay Baba. yeah beautiful larice yeah <clears throat> and a lot of people or like Ray, you know, there he's not near any Baba group. So this is this is wow, Wendy? that was yeah, go ahead. Wendy? Hello, Wendy. You still talking, Joe? No, no, you go ahead. Oh. Yeah. Um I feel like for myself, um, it was divine intervention that I ended up here. A Toronto Baba lover sent me Perinez, which you know, um, Jeff, 
Yeah. Um, she said, I think this would be really good for you. And I went, oh, I don't know, I don't know. But anyway, I put my fear on the back burner and I stepped in. And I just have found so myself so relaxed, so safe, um, hearing stories from the heart from so many people and the courage that it's taken to do that. Um, I, I'm just in awe, but every week it just feels like I'm coming home. I'm just coming home with other Baba lovers. We learn so much from this book. Um, I was first introduced to it. You sent it with Rosa and Horace back, and she gave me a copy. And we started reading it and fell in love with it. Never in a million years did I ever think I'd have the pleasure to be with so many lovely people and build on it. And uh, yeah, I highly recommend people to read this book. Um, it, it's like it just gently pulls stuff off of you. So that you can see something from a different perspective in a gentle way, a very gentle, loving way. And uh, thank you, Jeff, for you know, yeah. providing this. And, yeah. and plus, I have a new puppy, and her name is Grace. So every day I say Grace, I don't know how many times, and it reminds me about this group and the grace you know but it takes effort it takes effort so thank you everybody. yeah thank you <laughs> go ahead hey baba everyone hey, baba. um this book well thanks to jeff i received this book i didn't even know it was existing till he just sent it to me one day in the mail and I started reading it and oh my, it is a wonderful, as Jeff says, it's one of the approaches to Baba definitely. Um, what a beautiful approach and Darwin being who he was and being in such close contact with Baba and uh, truly an enlightened soul was the perfect author for this. For this uh, I call it a tutorial for anybody who wants to know how to approach Baba, what to, uh, how to deal with their um, inner life and to proceed forward. This is a beautiful tutorial. Um, even for someone like me who has been with Baba all along since my very childhood, um, you can open up just about any page and imbibe the lesson, the words that are there and really um, help to, 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 it helps you in your own journey forward. And um, I, I know I've received, I've gained a lot by reading this book. Um, and I highly recommend it to any newcomers, any people that are uh, wanting to know more about Baba and to unearth their own inner, uh, to go forward in their own inner journey. This is a wonderful, wonderful um, tool. And I have so enjoyed being with all of you through the last couple of years and going through this journey. Um, it has enriched my life to hear your stories and your inner feelings and depths to which um, you all have come to uh, through this wonderful, joyous sharing. So thank you, Jeff. Thank you, everyone. And I totally support the idea of Jeff, you taking a break in the summer. Yes, you totally deserve that. <laughs> but we don't want to lose you either. So. Uh, we, we should continue in some kind of um, format going forward. So, thank you. <clears throat> yeah, no, it's. Yeah. <clears throat> thank you, Gower. Yeah. Rosalie. Jeff Wolverton, you won't remember this, but there was a day because I knew I loved Darwin. I would only go to discourses when Darwin was there because the wine flowed when Darwin every, was there. Every three yeah. weeks, right? <laughs> I know it. Otherwise, it was 
it felt so mental otherwise. But um, then I then I know the book was out, but it was loose leaf pages, and then it was a book with the beautiful rose on the cover. I mean, that is part of my name, Rosalie. So I come to you, I know you have a stash of them, and I says, Jeff, I want one of those books. And he says, no, this is just for groups. And I will say to you now, I'm as good as a group. And I may be a group in myself. But I mean, you have to take it in humor, Jeff, if you yeah. said that. Yeah. But anyway, I love the book. Um, and I would say, because Baba is manifesting every focus on Baba through every way, like I'm reading their Baba manifesting, I listen to the mystical language, I'm reading about Baba's life. I mean, the works, this is my, this is my higher learning now. We don't know which way our so-called civilization is going. It doesn't look so good. So uh, Baba's only given me two experiences, which I will share. They're very brief. The one was at the bottom of his bed. I was all alone in, uh, I had come from California. And I felt just horrible. And I saw inwardly, Baba was leading me along a incredibly steep precipice on both sides. It wasn't like a ledge you could hold on to, nothing. And it was winding and Baba was young and fiery and moving fast. He had hold of my forearm and I was clinging to him with my hand on that arm. And wherever I was, was totally collapsing every step I took. And he was moving fast. So I don't, uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if things don't pick up speed as far as not feeling comfortable on the planet. The other thing is being with Mara, and I really, she was my favorite person. It was like sitting with Baba, no contest. And I used to have these imaginings in my mind that if someone came to physically hurt her, I would intervene. They would not hurt Mara. And I thought, it kind of puzzled me. But now I see it, Mara was bringing out my strength for Baba. I'm only living for Baba, as all of you are. That's all we have. That's all that is. I have come not to teach, but awaken me in you. It's imagine separation. Anyway, I love the book. He's, he has that mind, heart, intuitive balance that we all want. I mean, Bob is taking us from, he took us from sensation to reason. Now we screwed up reason. Now he's taking us from reason to intuition. That's a grand leap. I would say it's more of a leap than sensation to reason. So it's going to be a bumpy ride. And uh, I do take Bob as his word, holding on is, has most, most, means the most, because really nothing more makes any sense than holding on. What, you know, anything pales besides holding on to Baba. Anyway, so I may or may not be a group person. I was a black sheep of my family. So, you know, I have a bit of a sanskara of, you know, not being accepted. But I did used to throw temper tantrums when I landed in that family. So. You know, it's not like I didn't have anything to say. And with Baba, 
sometimes he nudges you to say things and he's been nudging me recently you know so anyway i'm grateful for the exchange but i got all sorts of going and i would say the 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 zooming is critical and i got after marana because they said they were only doing their sahabas in person and i thought and you want to be one of the five centers of the united states please do better do better marijuana they did it for um i'm Ortiz that time i mean we have the technology why should we leave people out why anyway i've said enough and uh thank you and i i did swipe the book from you jeff but yeah yeah i used yeah. it i used it well i used it well yeah no the no in the beginning we tried to get books uh not to not everybody in Myrtle Beach to have a copy. We were trying to get them all over the world because we didn't know how long we were going to be, have this be able to get these books before they got shut down. Bootleg. They were, bootleg. Huh? Cuz cuz it wasn't it was bootleg. It was wasn't bootleg. quite legal or whatever. So huh. we thought let's get as many out to Wyoming, to Alaska, to India and everything because we never knew when um the whole <clears throat> distribution was going to get shut down but thank I, god I felt, it I I felt in personal personally left out and I didn't like it and I didn't settle for it cuz I took a book from you good good yeah okay any anyone else um, <clears throat> let me uh Randy this is just because of the cover of the book. Um, the other day, I was looking at it. Every day, I pretty much look at Effort and Grace to get. I just open it up and I read something. Um, but I thought about that song from Bette Midler. It, it, well, I thought about it and then it came on, which was really weird. Um, but in it, there's the line that says uh, something uh, about um, the night has been too lonely, the day is so something, but afraid to live. And I, yeah. and it was almost like this book. Um, it teaches you how to live without being afraid. Beautiful. That's yeah. What, that's what came to me. It was like, oh my God, yeah. thank you, Baba. It, I was looking at that, then that song came on, and uh, yeah, anyway, I don't know yeah. but he knows Let's that. Let's see, maybe M Mayor Sagar could find the, the, the song, The Rose, by Bette yeah. Midler. Yeah. Which one? The, the it, song? It, it, the song is The Rose by Met, Bette Midler. Midler. Okay. And we could M I D L E R, and then uh, maybe at the end we could play it. It'd be nice. The rose. Okay. Oh, is Baba, Mayor Prasad here still? I don't know. No, he's not. He's yes. Yeah. Yeah. The rose by Beth Midler. Yeah, I found it. Okay, we'll save it, and we'll have it there toward the end. Okay. But we have the the once uh, unspeakable Diane. Ready to yeah. speak. Yeah. <clears throat> Pardon my dogs just started barking just when you called on me. Um, I, I'd have to agree totally with Wendy. Um, one of the things that Baba does for me and Darwin gives it into bite-sized pieces is how to incorporate this into life. And it's kind of, for me, where the intersection of spirituality and therapy come together and this this is my uh, I we came in halfway into the first round I think and there are times where I'm hearing things for the very first time because for whatever reason I was too thick or too distracted or too dense or whatever to take it all in so 
I could listen to it probably numerous times because it is so in depth. And uh, I will go on record because I know we're going to talk about this at the end, but it's part of my share here. Um, I don't uh, gravitate to the um, the sessions where they read a book and they just read it out loud and then move on. I gravitate to the sessions that read a section and discuss because that to me expands my thinking and um, people who are like-minded uh, such as you folks in these little squares help expand my brain more and um, just hearing you read out loud um, just wouldn't fit my needs but thank you yeah yeah I, I <clears throat> It is wonderful to hear all the different camera angles represented here on the inner life with Baba. Elizabeth. Good evening, everybody. I got here a little bit behind. Anyway, um, I think, um, of course, I would like to see effort and grace continued. I do think it's like, um, an implementation book for the discourses or anything else Baba has written, a way to show us how to put into practice some of the philosophical concepts or, or ways that we are supposed to be and how, how to get there. And particularly uh, for me, it was the understanding about sanskaras and um, kind of the relationship between um, destiny and free will um, and uh, the bringing up of issues that we need to deal with or some scars, whatever you want to call them, from the subconscious so that we have to look at them and then we have the option to make a decision which leads to the next phase of whoever we are to be. So um, things like that I think were really important and for me I really love connecting with um, especially certain people that I'm automatically drawn to, uh, and also other people that I may not necessarily be, and I have to learn to adjust. Um, but another part of it is all the, um, the different additional materials that people pull in, like uh, Meher Prasad, for one, pulling in a lot of quotes, and uh, Rosalie's quoting from all kinds of things, and Heidi and Wendy and lots, lots of other people. Many people have, have pulled in lots of information that I wouldn't have thought of um, that are new resources. And um, so I was in the first about a year and a half or two years, and then I dropped out for a while, but because I needed a break for myself. I don't know what that was about, but some whatever it was, it was internal. But I keep coming back, you know, um, one of the things I would, uh, so I hope it continues. I think it's really important. I think it's especially important because new people come all the time and everybody is at a different stage. And I think we see things um, each time differently because we ourselves are prepared differently at each day, each minute, each hour. As Baba says and God speaks, we bit by we bit our consciousness changes. And when our consciousness changes, we see things we've never seen before. We hear things we've never heard before. And uh, that parable in the Bible about the, the sowing uh, uh, of the seeds and what falls on fertile ground versus bearing ground and the comment about those who, uh, who were meant to see, see, and those who will hear, will hear. It's the same concept. Anyway, the, um, a suggestion I would like to make is uh, one alternative. Um, if the if this session is not discontinued over the summer, one alternative might be to have a session once a month or to schedule two sessions during the summer, six weeks apart. And in those sessions, one would have thought about something of um, that hit that has hit you in effort and grace that you might want to discuss with other people who have been reading it. And um, and so those sessions would have kind of a 
a flow to it and be stimulated by what people bring to it. And hopefully Jeff would still be the moderator as usual. <laughs> Those are my suggestions. Thank you, Chair oh. Baba. Thank you, Elizabeth. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, kind of echoing what some of you have said, I, you know, I spent so much time with Darwin uh, and and I heard all of this, all of the various insights and camera angles and everything, and it's still new to me. I'm, I'm thinking, how can that be? I, I I mean, it's not like I've heard all this before. I'm hearing all this still for the first time. I, I don't know how that could be, but um, it's you know, I mean, I should have had this stuff memorized backwards and forwards, but there's an element in there that's new that is just kind of unexplainable. How it, uh, we, as we, as our camera moves to different locations inwardly, new, d different vistas are opened up and we, we hear it all in a different way. It's, it's, <laughs> it's befuddling, but it's true. In the same way, you know, when I used to read Baba's discourses, and I'd read them through, and then I'd come back and read them through, and I'd think, God, did I read these things before? Because I had changed inwardly, and it's just, you know, I didn't see that before, and I didn't see this, and I didn't see that. So it's a beautiful unfolding that's very surprising. So anyway, <clears throat> let's, um, I, 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 I think I'm inclined to wait until maybe September, you know, but, you know, I can contact all of you if I get the, the whim to, uh, I, I, I'm just going to leave it there with Baba and see if I get a green light at some point, if it, uh, uh, sometime before September, let's say. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I, I'll try to be open to, um, from Baba what he might indicate because um, it's not about me it's, it's about what Baba <coughs> would like but I do think that what, what Larice said about sometimes it's nice to let this marinate a little bit uh, and sink in and because there's a lot of uh, deep things that are being uh, hitting our consciousness and it takes a while to integrate it naturally into our inner life. Uh, so, yeah. Rosalie. I, I would better term it mayhernate, not marinate. I oh, mean, Bob is, he, he is manifesting. <laughs> Everything that you read now, you will read anew because Bob is making it new. No contest. And as he takes our unnaturals away, sanskaras, we have a clearer mind, you know? It's like, you know, so why give up something that works in a very strong way? It just doesn't make any, and I really don't think it's a time for rest and relaxation or vacations, mm -hmm. really. Not a time. This is this is a time of work. The avatar put the work in. He suffered for all that lifetime. Tremendously. We have no idea. But as as things lighten up after the storm, you know, it's not going to be uh, abracadabra. Yeah. So right. anyway, I I. Uh, I value anything I can uh, get of his life. Darwin was incredibly clear. And I don't know what my path is. My path is just Baba. But ba Darwin's always been a, a beloved friend. He shared freely and he continues to this book to share freely. Doubtless, doubtless, it's so beautiful. Jay Baba. Yeah, yeah Jay Baba. Well, we'll have uh, Anthony. 
Lord Anthony. Uh, hey, Bob, everyone. Hey, I just some um, and zero pressure with this at all. I just want to play around a little bit with the idea with the late night chats. Uh, I know how much I love watching the recordings of those and just the the time, especially for um, people that work. It's really hard to make it to it. So I know just real quick, uh, two weeks ago, when we threw out that idea of like, oh, you know, if we didn't have effort and grace, maybe move in the Sunday late night chat up to 530. So we could at least all hop on there and still, you know, talk about these deep uh, things together. And yeah, some people had said that that wouldn't, I can't remember if it was you, Jeff, or someone else that for the people in other countries, um, that would be really hard for them. Um, Is it possible at all even on sunday to to move it like a little bit even like 30 minutes or an hour and if not that's that's totally fine i might try to see if i can make myself uh, come out to the 10 o'clock and just try to run off some less sleep at work on monday but i just wanted to feel out if that would be a possibility and that way all of us could you know who knows maybe we'll find we enjoy hopping on uh late night chats at you know, if we did it at like nine or nine thirty on Sunday, and just an idea, that yeah, zero pressure to make that happen. But wanted to see how. What time happen. frame are you talking? Eastern or Pacific, or what are you talking about? On the Eastern, because yeah, for the people in the Eastern but, time zone that work the next day, starting at ten is, it's just I don't know. You even nine thirty. Ten? Oh my god. Yeah, <laughs> but they're so good. The recordings of them, they're just. It's like, oh my God, I wish I was here, but there's just no way. <laughs> they yeah. don't need to be at that hour, do they? They could be at this instead of this time if you don't do this time. Well, the the thing is, is that uh, it's two. It's in the middle of the night for people in India, and then there's the RT that starts at nine, from nine to ten, uh, yeah. Eastern time. So that's the. Yeah, uh, th- that's the the thing that kind of that's why we have it at ten. B- to have it earlier, if we had it at eight, I think it would be f- maybe six o'clock or something in India uh, in the morning. You know, it'd be real early. So anyway, we'll um, we'll we'll uh, I'll, I'll ponder this. You know, and uh, yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, let's uh, let's end it with uh, the the song, the rose, uh, that Mayor Sagar can maybe he can get on there, and then uh, we'll have a few moments of silence. Okay, let me play that. You, <clears throat> we'll tell you if the volume is good. It's the one. 
have a few moments of silence. J. Baba. <clears throat> SJ, is that your new house? Oh, fantastic. <laughs> wow, beautiful. So happy. <laughs> Great. She was, she was all, you know, <clears throat> having to leave her place of many years without a clue of where she was going to go and Baba did something very surprising. I, I quoted that one piece that